source measurement units combine multiple tools into a single instrument. And in their case, the sum of the parts is much more powerful than the individual units. In this video, we review what SMUs are, take a look at the AIM TTI SMU 4000 series, its capabilities, and some interesting measurements that it can make. Welcome back to Workbench Wednesdays. My name is James, let's go review. Source measurement units, or SMUs, are a combination of power supply, electronic load, precision DMM, and in cases like the AIM TTI SMU 4000 series, they add a sweep and pulse generator to their output. They are called a four quadrant device because they can sync and source current without changing connections. The AIM TTI SMU 4000 series has two 25 watt models. One goes up to 21 volts and the other goes up to 210 volts. Their prices run in the range of four to $5,000. The Element 14 community and AIM TTI sent me the SMU 4001. Remember, these are precision voltage sources, electronic loads, and DMMs in a single box. The front panel has four wire inputs, a control knob, and a touch screen. And I am glad it has a touch screen because using the spinning knob is sometimes counterintuitive. Like here, I am always turning the knob to the right, but the selection goes left or right depending on the line on the screen. But seriously, that really didn't bother me. The touchscreen works fine. I just try to avoid using them when I'm shooting videos. This unit is incredibly compact. It is the same size as a benchtop multimeter or switching bench power supply. On the back are ports for remote access, a digital IO port, and rear terminals. What I really like is that these terminals have a built-in push and release mechanism. It does take a little bit of force, but my other instruments all use a two-piece adapter, which is easy to lose. Ask me how I know. The SMU 4001 can source up to 25 watts with a limit of 3.15 amps or plus or minus 21 volts. The source is capable of achieving full output power across most of its voltage range. For example, you get 3 amps at 8 volts or 1.25 amps at 20 volts. The output also has an adjustable slew rate. This scope shot is the minimum and maximum along with an arbitrary 1 volt per millisecond setting. It also has a high reactance load stability option for reactive loads like a motor or big capacitive load like this 4700 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. When 5 volts is applied, it rings forever. The SMU's control loop is reacting to the large capacitance, preventing the voltage to settle down. By turning on the high reactance mode, the step response is very different and the voltage settles out quickly. By the way, a 4 quadrant tool is very helpful in a case like this. I set the output state to zero volts, which lets the capacitor discharge through the SMU, which means I can immediately run the test again. Last, it has an arbitrary capability as well. These are built-in functions like a pulse or ramp that get applied to the output voltage. You can also load patterns from USB or with a PC utility. As a load, the SMU 4000 can operate in constant current, resistance, or power mode. It has the same limits as the source, so it can sync up to 3.15 amps. A common use case is to measure the capacity of a battery like this 350 milliamp hour LiPo. To make measurements easier, I made a JST PH to 19 millimeter adapter for use with instruments like this SMU. Remember, LiPo batteries have a low voltage cutoff, so the SMU should only discharge it until the battery hits 3 volts. In this case, I'm using a discharge current of 525 milliamps which is 1.5 times the battery's rating. However, this battery is specified with a maximum discharge current of 525 milliamps. Overall, it took about 29 minutes for the battery to discharge. But when the discharge is done, one piece of data is missing, the energy. In both source and load, you can only measure voltage, current, power, or resistance. So after the discharge, I had to calculate the battery capacity manually. And as expected, discharging at the maximum rate causes the available capacity to be less than the rated capacity. The SMU's graph view does give some idea of how the data changed over time, but I found working with the markers a bit cumbersome. By the way, just like the source, you can change the load current with a ramp or arbitrary waveform. One way I could see using that capability is to simulate a device's load as it changes power states to get a real measurement of how a battery will behave in a real application. The SMU 4000 has voltage, current, and resistance measurement modes like a bench DMM. 
For example, putting it into voltmeter mode lets me measure this battery. While ohmmeter mode shows the resistance of the resistor from before as about 10 ohms. Well, it shows the measurement after you remember to press the run button. Two other measurements that caught my eye are insulation resistance and leakage current. And when I hear those terms, I think passive components, specifically capacitors. Insulation resistance is the resistance of the dielectric layer and leakage current is how much current leaks through it. Based on Ohm's law, they are very related. Ceramic capacitors have an IR in the range of hundreds of mega ohms, sometimes giga ohms. Electrolytic capacitors, on the other hand, are a bit more leaky. This 4700 microfarad axial capacitor is rated for 16 volts. So I set the SMU4000 to measure leakage at 16 volts with a current limit of 100 milliamps. Then I let it run for a couple of minutes to allow the dielectric to fully charge. And the result is anticlimactic. This brand new capacitor is in spec. The data sheet limit was 2.5 milliamps. An accessory called SMU Link lets you connect two SMU 4000s together to make a two channel instrument. With two channels, you could characterize an active device like a MOSFET. Overall, I am impressed with the SMU 4000. It is a compact 25 watt power supply, electronic load, and digital multimeter. PowerFlex enables you to use that full power across most of its voltage and current range. Easy Mode is a fantastic tool. It simplifies getting the SMU into useful modes, especially when you're getting started. I really wish more multifunctional instruments had that kind of useful wizard for basic setups. But of course, you can always go into manual mode to change whatever you need. Last, the adjustable slew rate in reactance mode makes it very compatible with highly reactive devices. Hey, thanks for watching. Check the link below for show notes on the Element 14 community. You'll find lots of great stuff over there. If you want to see more videos from me or the other host, tap or click the things on the screen. For now, it is time for me to get back to my electronics workbench.